Hello. Welcome to the virtual reading fair day seven. So this is been doing this a whole week. And um we read um weekly the um for about 45 minutes. We do the first one at eleven and the second one we do at um two fifteen and we're reading on Zoom and usually um a children will read um a five or six pages of an illustrated book which is real short they'll read the whole book and adults are reading one one poem a newspaper or a magazine article or a few pages of uh of a book but this process has allowed readers to uh books in in a few sessions and, and then we have ask uh, questions so we're going to limit the questions to two questions per uh, uh, reader uh, to keep the uh, tab down. And um, so everybody else could introduce yourself and then Lynette will read first and then Mary will be asking her. Good morning. Mary Hardy, Greenville, Mississippi, teacher and author. Uh, Lanessa Stafford, Greenville, Mississippi, and I'm missing my, my sidekick Trey today, my little <laughs> grandbaby. Mm -hmm. Janice Neal Vincent, retired university professor, performance artist, author. In my mom, Talia, my, name, my name's Harry Chat, and I am six years old, and I'm going to the first grade. Okay. Talia? My name is Talia Hines, and I'm going to the third grade. I am nine years old, and I go to Jean Smith Elementary School. Very good. And she, she's a founder member of the Learning Tree Book Club. Right, good, we started good. two years ago that's at good, the church. That's good. Uh -huh. I was a good library of Mississippi's first reading fair. Vicki? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh -oh. And I am involved with the Learning Tree Book Club. Okay. And I am so thankful that all of the children and everyone are, are here for the intellectual revolution and so we can. <laughs> all right. Okay, we have a new person on the call. Can you um, turn your video on and introduce yourself? Okay. What? Well, well, that's so. Uh, maybe they'll uh, uh, come on a uh, later. But anyway, Lynette, let's read. <laughs> All right. I'm going to read from "We've Got a Job," uh, the 1963 Birmingham Children's March by Cynthia Le Levis. I need to look up and see how you know it could be Levinson or Levis. I really don't want to mispronounce her name. But here's the cover. It's a beautiful hardback book. So it's this book is uh, individual stories of children who participated in the 1960s Birmingham Children's March. And so what I'll do is I'll just read a couple of pages each time to kind of, you know, get us going. All right. The first story I'm going to read is Audrey Faye Hendricks. There wasn't a bombing that I wasn't at. No way for me not to be involved. Audrey lived with her parents and her younger sister, Jan, in a tidy brick house that sat on a small lot of grass in the Titusville um, section of Southwest Birmingham. Each afternoon when Audrey came home from Center Street Elementary School, she did her chores, played with other kids in the neighborhood, all of them black, of course, and sat down to dinner with her family. Audrey's mother, who had graduated from business college, 
did clerical work for an insurance company owned by a black man. Audrey's father went to elementary school, but started when he was five. He was, excuse me, but starting when he was five, he went and picked crops with his parents in fields owned by white people around his hometown of Bologi, Alabama. Later in Birmingham, he worked as a laborer and security guard at a dog food company and at a slaughterhouse. But the Hentrises' lives were not as orderly and quiet as this description makes them seem. Audrey was three years old on Christmas night, 1956, when the home of a local minister was bombed by a group of segregationists led by, hmm, Robert Dynamite Bob Chambliss. Reverend Fred Shellsworth was a good friend of the Hendricks family. Six months earlier, he had founded the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights, ACMHR, an organization that urged blacks to demand their rights. In particular, AC, ACMHR had been pressing the city of, of Birmingham to hire a black policeman and to allow blacks to sit beside white, sit beside whites in the front of the bus, in train, in train station waiting rooms, and even in schools. The explosion literally blew Shuttleworth, in, Shuttleworth into the air and demolished his bedroom and kitchen. Astoundingly, he walked from the rubble uninjured. His wife and their three children were also unharmed. Audrey knew of this attack against civil rights activists was far from unique. Many black people called their home bombing ham and said, Audrey, there wasn't a bombing that I wasn't at. No one would have blamed Mr. and Mrs. Hendricks if they had decided to keep quiet about civil rights following the bombing of their friend's home. But Audrey's parents weren't intimidated. The very next day, her father and about 15 other blacks sat in the front section of a bus where only whites were permitted. When the driver demanded they move to the back, Audrey's father politely refused, saying, we are comfortable where we are sitting. As a result, Mr. Hendricks was arrested and spent six nights in jail. When he was released, he volunteered to guard the Shuttleworth's home. As he drove there one night, more than a dozen police cars, headlights turned off surrounding him, told him, told to hand over his driver's license. Mr. Hendricks accidentally, <clears throat> excuse me, pulled his ACM HR membership card from his wallet instead. He heard a policeman say to the others, what are we going to do with this nigga? After debating whether or not to kill him, the officers decided to let him go. Audrey's father thanked God for saving him that night. Despite such dangers, ACMHR held mass meetings every Monday night in churches around town. Ooh. And every Monday night from June 1966 to April 1963, Audrey attended with her family and as many as 600 other people. Audrey's family sang ten father, I'm sorry, Audrey's father sang tenor alongside three of her uncles and an aunt in ACMHR's movement choir. The choir's director was Carlton Reese, a teenager who wrote the song, We've Got a Job. He wrote, he wrote the freedom song, We've Got a Job, which he practiced on the upright piano in the Hendricks living room. It became one of Audrey's favorites. It was no way for me not to really be involved, Audrey said. My parents were involved from the point that I could remember. My church was involved. You were there and just a part of it. This to the grown-ups talk, she learned the painful details of her homes, hometown's deep-seated racism. Okay, I can stop here and just pick back up in the afternoon session or I can read a little bit more. Can you, can you give us a summary of what you read? Because today you mentioned the Birmingham bombing and, and compared to the pages you read yesterday. Okay, so what, okay, like I, I was saying, the, these are uh, real life stories from people who are telling their own story about when they, were, when they were children and they participated in the civil rights movement uh, in um, Birmingham, Alabama. So in her story, she's just little, you know, little girls playing, she has a family and everything, but her family is involved in the civil rights movement. They're, they're attending uh, meetings and they are participating. And when uh, someone's home got bombed, they, uh, her father and some other men decided, okay, we're going to sit on the front of the bus, which was against the law, which was against tradition, which was against the rules, which was against 
somebody's societal norms, and he went to jail for six nights for that, but he did not give up, and he decided that he was going to help by, one way he helped was to guard the house of the man who had been bombed. And he faced death one night because if those officers had killed him, nothing, absolutely nothing would have happened to them. So she so she grew up, she grew up seeing this. And what's her name? What is her name? Uh -huh. Her name is Audrey Faye. Okay. Any other questions? So how does the title, We've Got a Job, thus far fit with what you have shared this morning? Uh, their job was to not just be children and watch from the sideline. Their job was to get involved, to help, to facilitate change. OK. Thank you. So when you first started, yeah, I was thinking you. another way about we've got a job. <laughs> okay. And when you talked about the so you man who wrote it, my mind was going to mm -hmm. working and getting paid. But I see that we've got a job is not the same. It's responsibility to mm -hmm. humanity. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That was very good. I'm looking forward to much more. On the <laughs> yeah. other side. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Mary, you ready? Yes. On, yes. The, on the other side of that, since I worked out there at the prison, I got to see Byron de la Beckwith, Edgar Ray. I got to see those. Uh, I got to see those people. Now, Byron Dillon Beckwith, he's gone now, but Edgar Ray Killen, he's still locked up out there, in, out there in Pearl where I was working. And I did get to see them. Uh, Edgar Ray Killen, he was the guy, he is still in the Klan today as he was at that time. How old is he now? Think how does Edgar Ray Killen and who did he kill? Edgar Ray, uh, Edgar Ray Killen was with a, with a, uh, a young man in '63 and um, uh, over there, over there in uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Okay. He was one of the clan that helped kill those three young men in Philadelphia. That was okay. Kevin Swear, and I. He was what you know. He was involved in that killing, and. He was the preacher, right? And when he got caught, he finally got arrested and convicted, and he came to the penitentiary. The first time he came, he was he was with the he was with the Howard Patrol, the uh, the uh, the Shelby County Police Department, the Mississippi State Highway Patrol. He was followed by everybody. The police, the uh, the oh. public uh, the journalism, and he was he was followed by. Everybody. Oh, he was protected. I see what you're saying. Well, the second time he came, he came by himself. Nobody else was nobody else was there with him and brought him. He had to come by himself. So, <laughs> but he was still. Of the clan, and he did let you know he was in the clan, and he even looked like he was in the clan, he acted like he was in the clan. Now, Beck was did not, Beck was, Beck was just was like a uh, Beck was did not know his right hand from his left, but uh, he was told to do that, he didn't think about it, he didn't, he didn't think on his own about echo about Michael Evans, he didn't think himself. He didn't think of that killing Egg Maker Evers himself. He okay. Well, thank you for those uh, comments, uh, Vicky. 
Okay, but he's uh, now. What now? Okay, well, uh, Mary's gonna read next. Do you are you reading today too, Vicky? I'm gonna read this afternoon. Okay, okay, me too. I'm gonna read this afternoon. Okay, uh, Mary, we ready for your story. All right, my poem. I'm reading from anthology of poetry by young americans and it's the 1996 edition and it's a book of poems by children uh, between between the ages of eight and 15. can you hold the book up yes and the reason i have this book my students submitted to the anthology um, and this is a this was done in 1996 so it was a group of students that i was teaching in 1996. and how old were they they were second grade i believe that year i had second through eighth grade and all of the students um participated but not all were published in the book and what what did you teach i was teaching gifted ed gifted education okay Okay, so this is a, this poem is written by a 12 year old and it's entitled Santa Makes Mistakes. Up on the up on the housetop, reindeers do stay because they're pulling Santa's big sleigh. Santa jumps down the chimney with his bag filled with toys hoping he doesn't awaken all us girls and boys. Does Santa have Alzheimer's or is it my imagination that Santa just left those toys as the wrong, at the wrong location? He left me a rocking chair and stockings for my feet. He took a go-kart to an 80-year-old man who lives across the street. The next thing you know, when everyone awakes, someone is going to find out that even Santa makes mistakes. And that was written by April Connor, and April at that time was 12 years old. Wow, that was very good. Santa makes mistakes. <laughs> yeah, we should put together a book of Poetry for for children in the um in the book festival coming up in that entered the po uh, poetry contest. Yes, that was one of my end products for my end of the school year for most of the years that I taught. That we would keep a collection of our writings and complete the publication, and that was something that they took home at the end of the year along with their, their autographs from their classmates. Okay, very good. Okay, I read, okay. Oh, go ahead, Mary. Uh -huh. No, I was about to say that I've done a few moments with Mary this week. I've read um, pieces from my students and I've gotten responses and remarks as to, Miss Hardy, have you kept all of those works all of those years? Of course, I have. <laughs> oh my God, you got a couple of books over there in your house. <laughs> I do. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. So, who's our uh, reader next? Talia, you want to read? Is everyone is everyone reading today except me? Oh, hold on. Is anybody reading? Is everyone reading besides me? No, I have to do my bully poem. It's very okay. short. Okay. I was trying to see if Talia was ready to read. Talia, are you ready to read? Yes. Okay. I hold your a book up and tell us the uh, name of the author and the name of the book. The name of the book is When I Grow Up. Illustrated by... 
Diane Goody. Diane Goody. Okay, hold it up so we can see it. Oh, yeah, that's a big book. Yeah, <laughs> To my son Charles, when you, to my son Charlie, you will. Accomplish all your good wishes in life, JC. For my son, D. G. Mom, when I grow up, what do you think I will be? Will I be funny or smart? Do you think I'll, I'll live near or far? Will I be a baker? and make the world a sweeter place to live? Huh? Will I be a teacher and let dogs come to school? Will I be a writer and tell stories of places far away and long ago? Will I be the mayor and let kids run the town? Will I be a climber? and reach the mountain? Will I be a garden? Gardener. Gardener? And plant seeds all around and watch them grow. Will I be a astronaut? and see the world from world from afar will i be a painter and make the world more beautiful will i be a builder and watch my building touch the sky Will I be a musical Music. musician and fill the world with lovely sounds? Mom, I can't wait to grow up. When you grow up, can you can be whatever you dream. No matter what, I will always be there for you. Just like now, I'll always hold you. Hold on. Hold on. Let's dream of tomorrow together. The end. Oh, that was wonderful. So, Charlie, what do you dream of being yourself? <laughs> I dream myself being a dancer. And tell everybody who you dance for. I dance for dancing dolls. Oh, really? That was a good story. I like watching dancing dolls. 
Yeah. I watched that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a star in our midst. Uh -huh. Very good story. Uh, that was a very inspiring story. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It would be it would be fun if we had uh, children uh, make make some decisions and run the town for a day. We would have some very good decisions made. I sure the smart. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we got some leaders on the call. <laughs> Hell, what would you like okay. to be when you grow up? I would yeah. like to artist. Mm -hmm. An artist. What kind of artist? artist? Drawing things, visual Paint. art, painting. Okay. okay. Are you over there drawing now this summer? Now, are you drawing this summer? Yes, ma'am. Kind of. Okay. Some Next time you draw something, please share with my share with us. Hold it up so we can see it. I didn't. I didn't draw it. Okay. Very good Does anybody else have any questions about Tally Ann? I just want to tell her, tell you that I thought that was very good. And I, I was thinking as you were reading in terms of your articulation that you must be highly involved. So once you finish the reading, I heard about some of the things that you do in life and that's wonderful i wish you much success with your aspirations okay. thank you okay who's You're next welcome. i can do my poem it's like i said it's very short the okay. one i mentioned yesterday when i was dealing with another anti-bullying poem of course, this comes from my book, A Little of Me, A Little of You. It's the second edition, and uh, Meredith McGee is the publisher of the second edition. So this is called Mean Miss Bully. Miss Bully sits in her chair looking mad. She really tried her best to make Jim sad. A number of times, she called Jim out of his name and tried a number of times to make him shame. She said that Jim was just stupid and crazy. She even got beside herself and called him lazy. Let her tell it, Jim could never do anything right. Her harsh bullying made him sleepless every night. But when her parents heard her call Jim names, they made her apologize and put her to shame. It's never cool, precious friends, to put others down. Whatever goes around will always come back around. And I want the children to tell me what they got from this poem, Mean Miss Bully. Uh, Can everybody relate? What did y'all get from the poem? Did you, did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Why? Is she called Mean Miss Bully? Because uh, she's bullying. What is she doing to make her a bully? She's making, she's trying to make one of her students sad. Okay. Okay, so she is picking on a boy named Jim. And uh, when her parents find out about all of this, what do they do? How do they react to her? Make Funny her care? apologize. Okay, made her apologize. 
That's very good because that's, that's truly the essence. Sometimes adults might try to protect their children, even when they know they are wrong. And the adults begin to look stupid before the other people all who know that their children are guilty. So this is a very good example of what a parent is supposed to be like when finding out that the child has actually committed a bad act. And so making the child apologize did what, in your opinion, for the child? What kind of example, in other words, were the parents setting? Can you answer? You know what kind of example they were setting? Anybody? I think it made the child accountable for the, um, his or her actions. Yes, they were teaching accountability, that you cannot get away with what you have done. And it might hurt you now, but in the long run, you will see why we made you apologize. You cannot go around hurting people intentionally. And so that probably was a great lesson in life for me, Miss Bully. She may have never bullied anybody for the rest of her life because it probably stuck in her mind what had happened. I remember when I was a child in school, I think I must have been around seventh grade. I never have forgotten it. I was outside with some other students outside of the the building when I should have been inside because the bell had already rung. It was early that morning and we should have already been in our classes. The teacher came out. She was not my teacher, but I never forgot her name. And she asked us, what were we doing? And I made a smart comment to her. She went straight to the principal and told him that was Principal Buckley at the near high school. I never forgot it. Mr. Buckley got on the intercom and he shamed me. He described the whole incident and he called my name. That followed me for years. I could just see the teacher who I had talked ugly to most of my life, I could, I could see the teacher. And that taught me never to do anything like that again. Because it was like the whole world was watching me. And that made a better person in me. So to this day, I'm very grateful for that chastisement. Because if it had not happened, there's no telling what I might be like now. I surely wouldn't have this book in my hand, you see. So I just wanted to share that meme, Miss Bully, today to give us all something to think about. And thank you for your discussion. Thank you. Very beautiful discussion. Oh, it's the way you like to be treated. Be kind. <laughs> Yes, uh -huh. yes. The golden rule: do unto yes. others as you okay. have them do unto you. Yes. Uh, we were taught that in school. Yes. yes. Right. yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I'm gonna read a, a few pages of my uh, children's uh, book, and then Hera will be mad. Uh, good uh, time wise today. The name of uh, my book is The Shada. I have three volumes of this Nishida book. It's a, a, a series which I named for my uncle. I'm sorry, for my grandfather, a Moses Meredith Cultural Arts book series. And by the way, my grandfather was born in 1891. And uh, one story I would like to share with you that he used to uh, tell his children and family was that 
even in the early 1900s, he lived in East Mississippi. He remembers slaves being auctioned on the auction block. They were still auctioning us on the auction block because at that time, uh, they were they had created the the laws to put black boys who didn't have parents into parchment to use them as labor, which was the new form of um, uh, you, um, uh, uh, the sharecropper system. But it was uh, uh, the labor in uh, the prison system, and 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 I was just mentioning this the other day. That's how the uh, they took the uh, all the, uh, the prison used to be here on State Street, and they moved it to an old plantation. And that plantation with with mainly black um, a labor broke even in one and made a big profit. But uh, anyway, so th those are some of the things that this character, she's a black girl that wears two Afro puffs. She's the only child and the only grandchild in her family. So I'm going to read the first. Uh, uh, these are the chapters. Local history, four governors from 1900 to 1916, and chapter three is uh, the Mississippi State Capitol. My child was saying that, uh, Okay, I think I'll read the introduction because I don't want to be too long. Hello, pretty girls, handsome boys, and all readers and learners. My name is Nishida. My name means student. Grandma Nana named me. She said, it is always good to seek the truth. It is always good to seek knowledge. Reading helps students discover truth and knowledge. I am eight years old. I will be in the third grade when school starts. I live in Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson is the capital city and the largest city in Mississippi. Most of the government buildings in our state are here. Jackson is called the seat of government because the business of governing takes place here. Our country is a democracy because citizens vote to elect government officials. Mama says citizens can vote when they turn 18 years old. I will be 18 years old in 10 years. Kings and queens are royalty. A country ran by kings and queens is called a monarchy. The king and his family and his trusted advisors control the government. Kings, queens, and presidents and prime ministers govern countries like parents rule the house. My mother and father run our house. I am the only child. I am my grandparents' only grandchild. I have been learning a lot about my culture and history this summer. Every race has customs and traditions. During the school year, I am required to do my homework and chores. Then I read a few books. I read 12 books per week. For pleasure. I cannot watch television. However, I watch television on the weekend. I must get permission from Mama to go to anyone's house. Mama said all adults run their household different. Therefore, we should respect people with different views. When I spend the night at my best friend Stacy's house, I get to watch more television than I do at home. She loves to watch Animal Kingdom, MPB, and the Disney Channel. I love to wear my hair in Afro puffs. Stacy loves ribbons on her long ponytails 
I love reading and history. Stacy loves math and science. When I grow up, I want to be a college professor like my mother. Stacy wants to be a veterinarian like her uncle Bob. During the summer, she grows the small pets at his veterinarian shop. Sometimes I watch documentaries at, with my parents. A documentary is a film about history, someone's life or community. My grandparents love the news. They watch news channels all day. <laughs> I have to wait until the commercials come on to ask questions. If I get bored, I work on my activity book, play games on my tablet, or read a book. Everyone in my family loves sports. We love tennis, basketball, football, baseball. My grandparents love boxing. I don't think boxing is entertaining. Mama told me if I don't have good things to say, keep my thoughts to myself. So I never say anything about boxing. Because I don't have anything good to say about people beating each other up. I'm going to stop there and finish. Uh, after that, um, on the next session, uh, the rest of anybody have any uh, questions about the Nishida introduction? Like boxing, huh? Is there really a real reason that you don't like boxing? But it because it is entertaining. Now, I personally love boxing, but the she the character doesn't like boxing because oh, she said she doesn't like people who uh, beat each other up. Okay, She's eight, okay. eight years old. Yes, so, okay. But I like Iron Mike. I like <laughs> Yeah, she she doesn't. I don't like boxing. Huh? I'm like, you don't like boxing? Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Oh, man. People, I always think people get bloody. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, we're going to take, uh, when all of this is over, this is another trip, the field trip for us to take a trail. Where? Mm -hmm. To the museum. Where? Mm -hmm. To the museum. Which one? The state camp? Uh, well, I w we want to go to right the, the, the ones that we so when Trey, you know, we read through the book with him, we're gonna and then we'll take the book to the goal. So we'll try to, you know, um, you know, correlate things in his life. Things that you read is also some things that you see or some things that you can experience. Well, that's what this whole book is. The sheet of this is the Mississippi right. State Capitol. And uh, it, it, mm -hmm. the Mississippi State Capitol, I, um, and also the Smith Robinson Museum, the Smith Robinson Museum is the sheet of first favorite mm -hmm. museum. But they're all wonderful learning experiences, all of those. Things. And the old Capitol Museum. We took some uh, kids to the uh, old Capitol Museum and one of the children walked up and saw the donation box and it had currency from other countries. And uh, that was interesting that we have people from all over the world to come to our museums, but our public school children rarely visit all of the um, resources uh, and um, museums that we have here in the city. So that's, that's something that all of our children should visit all of these resources because we have them all over the world because it's such a great history in all of them. So, yes, yeah, so what I'm saying is because the, the books that you've written, you know, Trey has the book, so we're going the things that you're referencing in, in your, that she's, that's what I'm saying, so it's not, it's the Capitol and the museum and downtown and the places that you're referencing, uh, we want to take him to see you see these different places. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's a very, very worthwhile uh, places to go. You can even uh, write down, a, a children can write down a sample bill when they visit. And they can mm -hmm. watch a movie. And uh, 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 it's just, it's just, uh, I've been to the old Captain Museum. But I have to several times. 
Yeah. And I I've, I've been to now, the, I've never, the I've Smith Robinson Museum. I don't know how many that is. The Smith Robinson Museum is just mm -hmm. awesome. That's our jewel in the city of Jackson. Smith Robinson Museum. Mm -hmm. And see, I've never been. I've been to the uh, what is, is the Civil Rights Museum, and um, I purchased Trey a book on the planetarium. And I did, and I said, well, let me look it up. I did not know that Jackson had one of the best planetariums in the country. Yeah, and it's re being be refurbished. Yes, yeah. Mm hmm And Smith Robinson. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, we, go ahead, Lynette. I was just saying the books that the books that you her her experience is well when we say, okay, well Trey, you remember when you read this and, and then that's so that's what I'm saying. And you know, we have more than one book. Uh y'all have y'all read them? Oh, y'all have we okay. So that's why, right, so when you started reading, that's why I know what you were reading. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the, the thing, the, the greatest mm -hmm. story to me about the Smith Robinson Museum is Smith Robinson himself. Smith Robinson was a former slave who migrated to the city of Jackson, um, I guess, during Reconstruction, and he became a barber and the first black lawmaker as an alderman in the city of Jackson. And he made good on his promise. He raised $2,500 and created the first public school in the city of Jackson for blacks in 1894. And I mm -hmm. think that there should be a statue of Smith Robinson because he migrated here. And, and became a great part of our mm -hmm. community, which is being a business owner. Because anytime you have, or you mm -hmm. are in business, you are, are really a driving force mm -hmm. in the economy. And at that time, the, the driving force in the economy was the white uh, uh, business taking over, and we were getting the crumbs. And uh, also, he became a, a great politician that left a legacy. Uh, in terms of his business and in terms of the school, which is now a museum. And I don't even know if he was literate, but he knew that literacy was the way up for our race when he raised the money. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's Harry, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you're going to take us out. Yes, ma'am. Well, let's read. <laughs> in a rush. Swan is in a rush. She has to splash in cold, wet splash. She goes splish, 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 splish. Wow, what? Slip, slop. Bad swan. Fell down in the wet splash. Swan just sat in splash. It's still like much. Then Swan got up. Swan did not rush. Swan did not dust in the wet splash. Swan went. Hold, hold, hold. One must get to pills best self shot. That got a lot and lot of stuff. One must get to the that shot. Pills best stuff shot is still open. One gets got to it at last will swan will rush in swan has crashed what new stuff will one get look at swan swan is all in yellow splash is 
body now. Swan is glad. Splish, 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 swan. Raph goes to camp. Raph asks his mom and dad if he can go camp. Yes, that said said that if you do some jobs. Are you through? Huh? Raph uh, was shocked. Jobs? Raph asked. Yes, said dad. But it isn't that bad. It's just the dog and the trash. That was seven pages. Okay. What's the name of the, uh, the book? Can you give us a summary of what you just read? Wrath and in a rush. In a rush, Swan was in a rush to pills, new stuff, to get yellow rain boots and an uh, umbrella and a rain jacket and a and a, and a rain hat so she can play in the water. Rap and Rap goes camp. Rap asks dad can he go camp? Yes but said the dad said yes but he has to do jobs. It was only two jobs. He had to wash the dog and take out the trash. Okay, very good. Okay, we, we've had another wonderful session, and I hope that you all will be able to come back at 2.15. So uh, we'll see you guys later. Have a, uh, a great break. <laughs> all right, see you guys later. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to upload the uh, video once I get it recorded. Converted to a, uh, I want to tell Harry. Miss McGee. I want to tell Harry. Uh huh. Hold uh, on. I went to camp. Harry, I went to camp when I was about 10. I went for a week. I had fun. Have you ever gone to camp? No, but my cousin has. He's in Boy Scouts. Okay. Well, maybe you'll get a chance. To... Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Well, maybe you'll get a chance to go. Uh huh. What'd you say, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be, I ain't going to be able to make it by 215. My mom has an appointment. Okay, then we'll try you uh, back in the morning if you can come on at 11. We enjoyed you. Yes, and we did. We enjoyed I, you. Okay, I have a meeting. You are a beautiful. <laughs> okay, okay. So I might not be here. Okay, okay. All right, we'll see you guys uh, uh, later. Have a good one. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Go bye -bye. have a good day. All right. Be safe out there. It's hot. <laughs>